big numbers come up all the time in real life, in science, economics, and of course in the GRE and GMAT. So let's get really good at handling them. Let's give you an example question and show you the key things you need to know to be very confident at dealing with big numbers. If it takes light traveling from Earth, and these are true stats by the way, a quarter of a billion minutes to reach Betelgeuse, a massive star a long way away, and 20,000 seconds to reach Pluto, approximately how many times greater is the distance from Betelgeuse to Earth than the distance of Pluto to Earth? First, let's get some things very clear when we're talking about a million, a billion, and even a trillion, which is a number I have seen come up in exams and of course in real life when we're dealing with economies, etc. First, a million is one followed by six zeros, usually with commas after every third number from the back. And one way you can remember this is it's 10 to the power of six. We're not gonna use that fact in this question, but it will be useful for the third and final question we're doing today. Anyway, one million is one followed by six zeros, which is 10 to the power of six. And 10 to the power of six is of course 10 times itself, six times, 10 times 10 times 10, etc. Okay, what about a billion? For a billion, we just add on three zeros. It's another comma with another three zeros. That's nine zeros in total. That's 10 to the power of nine. And a trillion, you guessed it, is one followed by 12 zeros, 10 to the power of 12. Notice the origin of by, two, tri, three. The next one is quadrillion, four. So that's just a little bit of the origin of the words there. That is some core knowledge that we really need to have confidently established in our brains. And with that knowledge, we can now tackle this question. There is one problem though. The first measurement was in minutes, a quarter of a billion minutes. The second measurement was in seconds. So what I would do is convert the minutes into seconds so we can talk about the same unit. You could also convert the seconds into minutes, by the way. Now, this is actually really important. Make the conversion first. I see so many students dividing the two numbers initially and then trying to desperately convert later when it's much more confusing and hard to do. Let's convert either the minutes into seconds right away or the seconds into minutes right away. And then once we're dealing with the same units, then we divide or multiply or whatever. Really important bit of advice there. You might wanna note that down. Okay, my choice is to convert the minutes into seconds. And how would we do that? Well, there are 60 seconds in a minute. So if we times the number of minutes by 60, we get the number of seconds. A quarter of a billion is of course 0 0.25, that's a quarter of a billion. And when we times that by 60, 0 0.25 times 60 gives us 15. So a quarter of a billion is 0 0.25 billion, which becomes 15 billion seconds. Now we're talking about seconds in both cases. 15 billion seconds to each Betelgeuse, 20,000 seconds to each Pluto. So it makes sense that we would divide these two numbers to get how many times greater the distance is to Betelgeuse than the distance to Pluto. So let's divide those two numbers. We've got one slight problem. Yes, we know that 15 billion is 15 followed by nine zeros, as we saw earlier, but that won't fit in the calculator. How are we gonna do 15 billion divided by 20,000? When in the GRE, and even our mobile phones, it often doesn't reach 15 billion in terms of the number of digits we've got available. Here's where cancellation comes in. So you see we've got four zeros in the denominator. Let's cancel out those four zeros with four of the zeros in the numerator, and then we won't have such a big number to deal with. So we're gonna cancel out four of the zeros at the bottom and four of the zeros at the top. And what you should notice is instead of having nine zeros at the top, we now only have five zeros at the top. And this will fit into a calculator. 1.5 million, divided by two is 750,000. So the distance to Betelgeuse is B, 750,000 times greater than the distance to Pluto from Earth. A lot of very cool lessons there in a short space of time. We've learned some scientific notation, 
By the way, that's what it's called when we use the little exponents, 10 to the power of 6, for example. That's scientific notation, and we're going to come back to that. We've learned about the numbers million, billion, and trillion. And I would say most importantly for the test, we've learned that it is good to convert all the units into a common unit before we do any divisions. I see far too many students waiting to convert after they've divided, and that's a really bad idea because they're much more likely to make a mistake. And you can see for yourself, if you do it this way, you often get it wrong. Instead, convert everything to a common unit and then do the division. Okay, next question. Global GDP, gross domestic product, was estimated at $94 trillion in December 2021. True stat. While global population was concurrently, meaning at the same time, estimated at 7.9 billion, it's probably 8 billion by today. And who knows, by the time you're watching this video, who knows what it is, 9 billion, 10 billion? What is the approximate global GDP per capita? That phrase per capita means per person. So quite clearly we need to divide $94 trillion by the 7.9 billion people to get how many dollars each person has on average. Of course, it's not spread evenly in the real world. Now, instead of writing out all those zeros, which would take absolutely ages, I'm gonna show you a very nifty little shortcut. Remember a trillion just has three extra zeros compared to a billion. So a trillion is just a thousand times a billion. So look at the shortcut. Instead of writing out all the zeros, I'm just gonna rewrite 94 trillion as 94,000 billion. And that's like the common units. So we're doing 94 trillion divided by 7.9 billion but instead of writing trillion, I'm going to convert the numerator into billions. As we said, always find a common unit first and then divide. A trillion is a thousand times a billion. So 94 trillion is 94,000 billion divided by 7.9 billion. The billions cancel out and we're just left with 94,000 over 7.9, which is 11,899. So answer E is the closest. Now some of you might say that's a bit too fancy of a shortcut. That's fine if that was too difficult. Of course you could write it all out with zeros. Remember a trillion has 12 zeros, a billion has nine extra zeros, and then just cancel out the zeros yourself manually. That's a fine way of doing it too. Maybe it adds on 10 seconds, but if you're more comfortable doing that by writing out the zeros, that's fine. I just wanted to show you that you can easily convert from trillions to billions just by adding on three zeros. Or if you wanted to convert from billions to millions, you could add on three more zeros. Or even from trillions straight to millions, you could add on six zeros. Anyway, we're building up to the final crescendo, the last question in this video on dealing with big numbers. This time we're gonna use a bit of scientific notation because the answers are written in scientific notation. What is scientific notation again? It's where you can write any number as a number between one and 10, in this case 1.5, if you look at answer A, times 10 to the power of a certain number. I know that sounds pretty wild, but you can literally write any number as 5.4 times 10 to the 17, or 2.9 times 10 to the three. Any number can be translated like this. So this question, they're asking what is 30 million times five trillion? And remember when we started, I showed you some scientific notation. Do you remember what a million was as 10 to the power of what? A million was 10 to the power of six. Do you remember what a trillion was? A trillion was 10 to the power of 12. It's got 12 zeros. So we can quickly convert this calculation into 30 times 10 to the power of six, because a million is 10 to the power of six, and five times 10 to the power of 12, because a trillion is 10 to the power of 12. Notice, by the way, if you try to do it with zeros, even if you wrote out the correct number of zeros, it obviously wouldn't fit on the calculator. So this is a much better shortcut for answering the question without even picking up the calculator or typing in the calculator in the exam at all. That's fine, but how do we deal with this multiplication, you might be thinking. First, let's multiply the numbers that are on their own. That's the 30 and the five. Ignore the exponents for a moment. 30 times five is 150. Now the exponents. 10 to the 6 times 10 to the 12. What happens to those little numbers when 
you multiply them. 10 to the 6 times 10 to the 12. If you said that we add the little numbers, you're absolutely right. That's something you need to know when you're dealing with scientific notation. If you're multiplying two numbers together with the same base, you just add the little numbers, the little exponents to get the answer. So 10 to the 6 times 10 to the 12 is of course 10 to the 18. And we're almost done. But what is that thing I mentioned about scientific notation? The first number has to be between 1 and 10. So it can't be 150. That isn't really scientific notation. But that's fine. Nothing to worry about. We can handle that easily just by moving the decimal point 2 to the left with 150. So we're not going to call it 150 anymore. We're not even going to call it 15. We're going to move the decimal point one more to the left and call it 1.5 to keep it in that one to 10 range. So we move the decimal place two to the left, goes from 150 to 15 to 1.5, but we have to balance that out. We can't just divide that by 100 and get away with it. Because we've moved the decimal point two to the left, we've divided 150 by 100, which means we have to adjust the power of 10 to compensate for that dividing by 100. To cut a long story short, because we move the decimal point two places to the left, we have to adjust the power two places higher. So instead of 10 to the 18, it will be 10 to the 20. Again, we've moved the decimal point twice to the left, so we have to adjust the power of 10 up by two. The difference between 10 to the power of 18 and 10 to the power of 20 is it's 100 times bigger, an extra times 10 times 10. And that balances out the divide by 100 that we did to the 150. So that's a bonus explanation for this video on how to handle scientific notation. But the main thing I wanted to convey is a degree of confidence for you in handling numbers with millions, billions, and trillions. And you can either handle them with lots of zeros and then canceling out by hand physically, crossing out the zeros, or you can use scientific notation, or you can use the shortcuts of converting from a trillion to a billion, as I showed you in this video. And just to throw in there one last time, even though you're sick of me saying it, always convert them to a common unit before you divide. Do let me know if this video was useful and have a wonderful day.